Welcome to another episode of JAG University. I am again your host, Dante Harris, and I again yeah. have my good friend and uh, the cannabis lawyer, oh. Danny Torres. <laughs> His mother calls him Daniel. Yeah, well, only when she's mad. <laughs> My mom does not call me Dante when she's mad, but that's another story, <laughs> man. Uh, thanks again for coming by. Thanks Absolutely. again for sitting down. And um, again, I really enjoyed everything that you shared in our previous episode. So if you mm-hmm. haven't watched that, man, go back and, and listen to what Danny had to say. He, he really dropped some some knowledge nuggets, if you will, about the cannabis industry, some of the pitfalls and some mm-hmm. of the things that people are not knowing yeah. about it. So, um, yeah. So today, I want to talk a little bit more about the insurance side of things. Oh, yeah. And then I also have a a few questions for you, if that's cool. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Most people don't know I started my career in insurance. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I mean, basically, you should start working here then. Yeah, I I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Don't worry, don't worry. You guys do have a really fun setup, and it's a really nice office. So I might consider it. I'm just saying. Find me a nook somewhere. Look, we got space. (laughs) We have space for you. All All right, right, I'll find a nook. We'll talk about that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so... Uh, with with cannabis, again, we don't have a lot of carriers that mm-hmm. we can pull from, but the carriers that we have access to, I think all of the all of the carriers that actually write cannabis um, in in the United States, I think we all have appointments with. So that's really awesome. Mm-hmm. Now, um, there's so many different lines of business, and I just want to touch on a few of them. Yeah. So each. Like, say, if you're a grower or a manufacturer, even a small business down here in, in Florida, right? Like, you yeah. have to have property insurance. Absolutely. You want to make sure that you're covered for any kind of physical damage or any kind of bodily injury. So you need general liability insurance. Absolutely. And then what's really cool, so you can also insure the product itself yes, on the sir. shelves. Yeah. And that, that kind of, like, takes care of if anyone has any kind of reaction or if it uh, creates any injury to them. Based on the finished product, Mm -hmm. now you have some kind of industry or you have some kind of uh, coverage for that. Now, we were talking before we started shooting, and um, a lot of people uh, don't realize that you want to have your own individual insurance policy, whether you're the manufacturer, whether you're the transportation company, whether you're the lawyer, and you always want to make sure that you don't have any kind of exclusion. So talk to Mm -hmm. me a little bit about some of the things that you see uh, that people are excluded on and why they shouldn't write that policy. Yeah. I mean, that's interesting, right? And it goes back to to understanding whether you're operating in in, in under federal law, Mm -hmm. uh, the legalities or illegality of cannabis under federal law. Okay. And then you're looking at things at the state level in the cannabis family if you're operating in the hemp business, for example, which Uh is 100% legal at the federal level. It is 100% legal at the state level. There's still regulation by the FDA that is not 100% uh, out or, or we don't, we're still missing a lot of regulation. Okay. Um, and so that will determine what your business kind of looks like. But for example, if, if you're uh, if you're you're a farmer, you're in, you're in agriculture. This is a farm just like any other farm, whether you're in Florida or Illinois, yeah. uh, or Ohio, and you're Great place. and yeah, and you're growing corn or you're growing hemp or cannabis in a state that allows for you to to grow hemp. You you need property. Yeah. You, you need to insure your equipment. Absolutely. You know, a, a tractor is a tractor. It doesn't matter if you're using it to plow a, a field to grow corn, soy, or, or hemp, or cannabis. It doesn't yeah. matter. Um, so you need that. Um, the professional liability insurance. You, you need all of it. And so really understanding your business, looking at your risk factors, and then saying, okay, uh, this is what I need. Working with your broker, working with your agent yeah. uh, to make sure that they're able to write a policy for you that works because you don't want – to buy a policy, not tell your, your your agent, and definitely not tell your broker or your carrier what you're actually doing. Right, because they'll, they'll <laughs> decline you. And, and then, right, yeah. because they all they all do the inspection. They want to come out and they want to understand the risk completely. Yeah, yeah. And um, once they understand the risk, now they can adequately write Correct. and cover the risk. Correct. Um, and and what I want I want to challenge all insurance agents to do yeah. is with, especially with GL policies mm-hmm. look for the exclusion of A and B. Understood. And especially in this industry because if if your product is going somewhere mm-hmm. and they are open to assault and battery you want to make sure that you're covered yeah. if anything blows back on you. Yeah. Obviously you want to make sure that that place and that store has their own policy as well yeah. and that's going to be yeah. the primary 
But as as someone who's connected to that, yeah. you want to make sure that you're not excluded from assault and battery. And, and you make a great point. Everybody, or not everybody, but a lot of people think that, oh, cannabis industry is just the farmer, the manufacturer, and the retailer. Yeah. There are so many ancillary services, the lawyers, yeah. the accountants, the, the, the transportation, uh, the person that the, the sells you fertilizer. Like mm-hmm. all, everybody who is somewhat connected to the industry needs to make sure that their risk management yeah. is adequate for the business that they're doing, mm-hmm. especially if they're interacting and they're doing business with cannabis right. companies. And, and because if, if they have an exclusion, Yep. Then they don't have coverage. Then you're right. You're, you're paying for a policy that doesn't provide coverage that you yeah, need. Exactly. And then, you know, again, insurance isn't in case something happens. The whole reason for insurance is because life happens, mm-hmm. and you want to make sure that you're prepared for life happens. Because if you're waiting to get prepared after it happens, it's too late. Yeah. Somebody told me once that reality is way richer than our imaginations, <laughs> um, and it's true. And as a lawyer, I see it every day. Right. I yeah. see so many things that happen that you you try to preempt you try to think what could go wrong that's my job mm-hmm. and that's your job yeah what could go wrong and we try to manage it as much as we can but yeah. reality happens and life happens and that's why we need to make sure that our risk management practices are adequate our coverage is in place that we have the right people to work with us and tell us okay uh, what do you guys do oh yeah. I, I i have a farm okay then this is what your reality kind of looks like. What are you into? Oh, I have an e-commerce site that I sell finished hemp products. We got to get you. We got to get you cyber. Correct. <laughs> and so now you work with someone like you that kind of can walk you through the process and mm-hmm. say, "You need this. You need this. You need this. I would recommend this." And then now the business is in a better position to make decisions. Right. I, gosh, I couldn't have said that any better. You I probably like, could. I mean, no. <laughs> Maybe if I like wrote it down and you gave me the mic to take home, I could have practiced in the mirror. <laughs> yeah, no, Maybe. no. <laughs> but I think, again, with insurance, it's being adequately covered. Mm-hmm. Right? I think a lot of people are paying for insurance just yeah. to say that they have insurance. Yeah. And that's not going to work for any business. Yeah. Um, I think in an industry where it's growing and it's growing exponentially yes. so, so much and people are yeah. waiting to see how it goes, setting the precedent early on, like, okay, I need this coverage because I have a building and I have equipment and mm-hmm. property. Mm-hmm. I, I have people that are working there and it's more than four people, more than five people. Okay, I need to have uh, a workers' comp policy in place. Yeah. Make sure I'm protected. Oh, yeah. I, I sell products on the internet. People have, like, I have a team that works remote. I need cyber insurance. Mm-hmm. I need to protect my business 100%. from hackers. I, my product's going to shelves. I need product liability. 100,000 right? million percent. And it's, if if you if you're transporting and you own the yeah. and own the vehicles, yeah. look at commercial auto. Yeah. I think yeah. there's so many different lines of business in this industry, in many industries. But um, people are, are sometimes looking just to get the bare minimum. Like I just yeah. need a general liability. I, I spoke yeah. with a client yesterday. I just need a general liability policy. No, like, <laughs> <laughs> no one comes to your office. Yeah, you do not need that. What we need is an errors and omissions. Correct. And we also need, Correct. Um, I think I set him up with cyber because right? mm-hmm. he's doing a lot of work remotely. And I mm-hmm. think, again, in this industry, we're growing so much. Yeah. We need to make sure that we're setting the precedent and we're setting a good foundation for other companies in, in this industry to continue to build yeah. on. And I think that's how people start getting comfortable with the industry. Even, and I talk about this a lot. Off camera, yeah. Um, it, it, we're gonna get the federal level comfortable with this when they start seeing that cannabis companies operate like any other company. That's and we great. we touched on this in our previous segment. Um, it's just a business. It's yeah. just a business like any business. So you need your insurance. You need your 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 bank accounts. You need to have everything in place. It's just a business. And when the federal level and other parts of mainstream society start seeing the industry just like the corner bakery, yeah. then the questions will probably not be as many and as frequent. But That makes sense. But yeah, yeah. I mean. Right, because you, you get used to seeing these risks more and more. Yeah. Excuse me. I know like we're in a hard market right now. So mm-hmm. the information that underwriters are asking for or carriers are asking for up front, mm-hmm. like loss runs for the past three mm-hmm. years, um, 
<laughs> they're asking for so much, right? You, Appraisals. You probably don't have that. And I mean, it, and, and it's like, I forget. Sometimes I'm yeah. not going to lie. Like, I forget that they're going to ask for all this yeah. stuff. So yeah. when I send my submission, I'm like, okay, I know I got to get this, this, and this. I think the more we get more and more comfortable, mm-hmm. we'll be able to have all this information on the front end. And yeah. again, having a good relationship with your client, 100. speaking to yes. them, being very transparent and candid about what it is that you're doing, yep. what products you're going to be selling, yep. and, and what states you're going to be operating in. It's yeah. only going to make things that much easier to mm-hmm. write, that much more comfortable for carriers to write, and then that much better yeah. for the federal government to see. I, I think that's that's great, and you touch on a really good point, especially for on the insurance side of the house, also on the legal side of the house. Um, each state has its own laws. So yes. it, you could be operating in a state, and I'll take it back in history, 1996, California decides to legalize cannabis for medical use. Was this because of the Tupac video? <laughs> California law? No. It, maybe, maybe. There was, a, there was a lot going on in California in the 90s. I grew up in the 90s. It was amazing. Uh, Bad boy records. Yep, 100%. Oh, wow. All right, took me back. Um, but the point is, they opened it for medical use first, and then they went adult use or recreational. And that's what's happening across the entire country. Okay. Um, each program is going to look different, right? So so a medical program uh, is really patient-driven. It's very restrictive. There are qualifying conditions. An adult use program, it's just a recreational program that you can just buy your product. Pricing is different. Taxing at the state level is different. So the business is going to run differently. Right. Um, states like Florida that have a requirement for vertical integration. What does that mean? It means that the I was same, wondering the same thing. <laughs> the same. The one company has to own everything along the distribution line from seed to shelf. So okay. the big cannabis companies that you see around Florida, they own the farm, the manufacturing. The, the delivery system, the distribution, all the way out to the retailer, wow. they are all operating under the one blanket. That's why it's so limited. Other states don't have a vertical integration requirement, uh-huh. which means that you could just be a farmer or you could just be a manufacturer or you could just and be you a just retailer. Play that role. And yeah, and it's, it's more like any other business, right? You could make clothing, but you could just be a retailer that sells somebody's brand. Um, and so that's that's where the industry goes. And like I'm saying, it's it's just another business. You know, I, I don't make sneakers, but I could have a shop that sells sneakers, right? Yeah. But in Florida, they require you to be the sneaker maker and the seller and then <laughs> yeah. everything along the line, which is very onerous. It, it's very, very hard to get into the industry in Florida, but other states that are completely open and don't have that integration, it's easier. And then you're going to have a lot more businesses, but they're going to be very specific. And that's where you guys come in and tailor things for a retailer or a manufacturer that doesn't sell direct to consumer. They just sell B2B. Yeah. Um, And and so that's why it's important, like you said, that you understand the business. You understand your client. You understand what their needs are. And they could come in and say, oh, I want a a CGL policy. Because I mean, yeah. No. Like, here's 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 the thing. Like, people come to you because of your 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 specialization as mm-hmm. a lawyer. Yeah. Right? And a lot of people, a lot of companies are coming to you because of your your wealth of knowledge in the cannabis industry and from a legality, legality standpoint. Mm-hmm. People come to the insurance agent because we know insurance. People yeah. come to, to JAG because we know insurance and yeah. we know uh, cannabis insurance. Yeah. You guys insure me. Right? So, <laughs> hello. So it's, it's good. And again, I think the number one thing people just have to make sure that they do is uh, pr- practice transparency. Yeah. Like, I can't, I can't ensure what I don't know about. Yes. And you can't protect what you don't know about. Yeah. So um, just continue to build our relationships with clients and, mm-hmm. and really just continue to do things like JAG University, provide yes. resources and yes. information for people to be more educated on it. And um, hopefully, like, things get a lot easier. More carriers are open to, yeah. to riding this, this risk. Yeah, and I I love what you guys are doing with with Jag University because they're not only in cannabis, just in general. Yeah, there there's a lot of misinformation out there. Absolutely, people think they know what they need, um, and we all think that our Google search is as good as anybody's professional certificate or law degree <laughs> or whatever. Um, unfortunately, but you really need to call your broker. Call your yeah. professional and say, yeah. this is my business. This is what I do. Um, how do I get it 
covered. You might have a bigger or lower appetite for risk, but that's what you work with mm -hmm. you, know, you, for example, um, on a daily basis. Right. Well, I, I can kind of stomach this. It's okay. Let me put more into my cyber, right? Because we have a technology company. Well, yeah, okay. Fine. Yeah. 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 And, and, and that kind of stuff, that's where that relationship really, really plays a big, big role. Man. Danny, I always feel just smarter sitting across from you. No, like no. You just make me. No. You, 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 just you bring it so out. You bring it information. out. Information. No. And like I'm like, oh man, I'm about to, I'm about to go to lunch and talk to people about this and sound like a <laughs> genius. <laughs> I'm so you serious. bring it out. Plus, you make me look better because you're oh a good God. looking dude. I know. Well, I was gonna say you're a better looking guy, mm -mm. but okay. Mm -mm. You know, what? we gotta wrap this Absolutely. up. Thank you so much <laughs> for coming back to another episode of Jag University. Danny, thanks for coming. Thank you, brother. Love you. Next time.